Another issue that facing young people today is who they look up to. You know, we, sure, of course, we urge our young people to respect their parents and their families and elders. But today's, today's society, society and the connectivity that we have goes much, much broader than that small circle. There's a certain amount of civil behavior that our society demands, but lately it's been sorely lacking. What message does that send to our young people? As a nation, we've been communicating to the world recently that we just don't know how to behave in a civil and an appropriate manner, whether before Congress, on a tennis court, live at Radio City Music Hall, or backstage at a late night talk show. I'm not trying to sound preachy about this, but lawmakers and other icons that are highly publicized become people that kids look up to and ought to be able to respect. And what example are they getting? And again, we come back to the values we teach and why they're so relevant. And the role models that scouting provides, like Josh Morris and the tens of thousands of others, are so vitally important to the health and well-being of young people today. And those values that I'm speaking of are embedded in the scout oath and the scout law. Those values have survived the test of time for the past hundred years, continue to do so today, and will guide our scouts into the next century. Now what better way to harness this vision that we have for scouting and its energy than this 100th anniversary celebration that we're talking about? You're going to have your turn, City Club, in a couple of years. I hope you take it with as much vigor as we're taking it, because we're taking no prisoners. What we're talking about here is not just a big birthday party. We're not going to sit around on February 8th, sing happy birthday, and talk about the good old days. No, sir. We're going to take this celebration to the people and talk about scouting's next century of service. We've been guiding young people along the scouting trail since the decade that Will William Howard Taft was president, Henry Ford established the first moving assembly line, and the Wright brothers first ferried that little bit of air cargo on their airplane. And all during that time, the founding principles have remained intact. The strength of the Scout Oath and Laws transcended the first century of World Wars, Laurel and Hardy, Odyssey and Harriet, man's first steps on the moon, and the World Wide Web. We have guided tens of millions along the scouting trail, and we see that as only the beginning. Let me, let me just highlight a couple of the major features of our 100th anniversary celebration because I think it speaks volumes to our commitment to making it right. First, let me talk about the National Hall of Leadership, an opportunity here to recognize scouting volunteers across America who've made a significant difference in the life of another person. We've invited scouters from every corner of the country to submit stories about somebody who made an impact on their life as a scouting volunteer, and so far we've had thousands of submissions of these wonderful stories that we can tell over and over again across the country and right here in Cleveland. BSA Alumni Connection, we have over 50 million living alumni out there, and this is a central core of our strength. We've created a web portal and a central place where these folks can re-engage and reconnect and smell the wood smoke again and get back involved in the scouting if they've strayed off the reservation. A program called the Generations Connection, and to, to celebrate the impact the scouting has over generations in families, a partnership with the Arbor Day Foundation. And it's a marvelous opportunity to look at the scouting family tree. And for every tree planted in this partnership from the Arbor Day Foundation, another will be planted in the Blackhead National Forest in Montana, creating the BSA Centennial Forest that will live on forever. A year of celebration, a century of making a difference, an opportunity for every scout, every scouter, every volunteer, and every parent to engage in a, in a recognition program, getting an award, exploring the values of these five pillars of our celebration, leadership, character, achievement, community service, and the stewardship of the out-of-doors. Adventure Base 100, this incredible 10,000 square foot campus that's that started in Pasadena on January 1st and 42 cities later will end up on Thanksgiving in New York that tells the story of scouting's past and its present and its future. We've already had 50,000 people in Pasadena, San Diego, and a stop in Las Vegas in the first three stops ex experience this incredible adventure. And our capstone shining light across America, from our closing arena show at our, at our Centennial Jamboree at Fort A.P. Hill in Virginia, with the help of our communications partner AT&T, we're going to broadcast via satellite to every nook and cranny of the world that closing arena show so every scout and scouter in America can participate in this iconic event. Here in Cleveland, you've got a list of your own 100th anniversary events that are pretty exciting. In addition to the local events that we talked about and you're plugging in there, you're going to have a 1,000 of your kids in the Cleveland St. Patrick's Day Parade. Do you make the lake green? Is that? <laughs> That'd be an interesting project. Eagle Project, okay. 
A thousand scouts in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. You're going to have, a, in May, a 2010 Centennial Camporee for all of your scouts. And they've developed a historic walking trail in downtown Cleveland. It's a self-guided tour that highlights past scout headquarters and other things of scouting interest. Those programs are designed to get everyone engaged and everyone fired up. We launched this new stamp. If you saw that, the, the new Boy Scout stamp, there's going to be a Boy Scout Centennial coin that the Mint is putting out. We celebrated the achievements of our two millionth Eagle Scout last year. Anthony Thomas of Lakeville, Minnesota was named the two millionth Eagle Scout since the first Eagle Badge was awarded in 1912. Anthony's a great kid, he's a great ambassador for scouting and will be all this year and he represents everything that the Eagle Badge stands for. Character, integrity, leadership and service to others. And if you saw the Tournament of Roses Parade, you saw the award winning float. So we're serious about this. So what about scouting's future? To help prepare scouting to be ready for the future, we kind of needed to reinvent ourselves, and I mentioned that earlier. We need to re needed to redefine ourselves as a relevant resource. And we had to redefine ourselves for all Americans as a touchstone for values and for vision. We needed parents to see that they need scouting. We need young boys and young men and women to see that they need scouting. Right there, that corner table. We needed them to see that scouting makes them better. And to do that, we needed to make scouting better. We needed to make ourselves better. And that's really been an inspiration to me, the process over the last two years to go through that exercise and then to feel the palpable energy around the country for people who want to support scouting. And yes, we recognize that scouting may not be for everyone. That's what this great nation is all about. The absolute right to respectfully hold different views, but come together for the common good. And that's what this great forum like the City Club is all about to provide a place to discuss and air those views. Our goal is not to change the minds of our detractors or change who we are, but we're going to make darn sure that we cross all the cultural barriers that we can to offer this program to as many young people as we can because it changes lives. And rather than continue to allow ourselves to be defined by others, we're going to use the centennial celebration to define for ourselves to the American people who and what scouting is. I want to tell you about one great event that happened this past year to sort of cap the vision. It won't be long and scouts and scouters will be crossing the New River Bridge across the New River Gorge in West Virginia to attend the new scouting adventure base in West Virginia. That's made possible by the generosity of a man who saw the vision, a distinguished Eagle Scout, Stephen D. Bechtel, Jr., whose $50 million gift late last year allowed us to launch this project to become the new home and permanent home of our national jamboree and to become a home for a new high adventure base where we can challenge young people within a 10-hour drive of 65% of the population of the United States and put kids on a mountaintop. It's people like Stephen Bechtel and people like folks in this room that continue to make the journey an exciting one. And our dream for the next 100 years includes reaching out to neighborhoods and families who have not had the opportunity to experience scouting. We know the demographics of this nation are changing. And it's our responsibility to keep pace with where our service to America needs to go. Through our recent Hispanic initiative, we have established pilot programs in six American cities with large Hispanic populations and are this year, 2010, launching similar programs in another three, day, three dozen additional communities. And for the first time, we're offering the Spanish translation of the Boy Scout Handbook to reach out to even more Hispanic families. We're adding new Hispanic scouting professionals, units, volunteers, and scouts every day. So we know we're on the right trail. As I close today, I'm going to ask your indulgence to share a personal story with you, if I could. I come from a family of eight children. I'm the son of an Italian immigrant who uh, came to this land with his father to save my grandfather's family from starvation in southern Italy. Grandpa came and then had enough money to bring the next boy and then the next two boys. And over a three-year period, finally collected the whole family. Grandma finally got here. They settled in Tonawanda, New York. Somehow or another, they ended up in California chasing their American dream. That's where I come in. And let me take you to the spring of 1959 when I was 12 years old. My best friend, Abraham Vega, invited me to go with him to a meeting of Troop 28 in San Juan Batista, California. San Juan's little village of about 1,000 people was then, is today. And Troop 28 was the only troop in town. I was fascinated. I joined. I got involved. It was great. I had no uniform, no handbook, or mess kit, or any of the resources to get them. 
But miraculously, one day they just showed up at my house, and I suspect old Milt Harrell, the godfather of scouting in our town, had something to do with that. 